In this video, we're going to give a basic introduction to database application development. And then in subsequent videos, we will talk about how this is actually done with HTML, PHP, and MySQL. So to begin, we need to have an understanding of a client-server network. So a client is going to request some kind of service from a server. The server will then render that request back to the client. This is an example through like web servers. When you're looking at a web page, a server would then render the web page to you. What we have focused on in this class is rather than a web server is a database server. So how do servers and clients handle the application logic associated with these types of networks? Well, we have three types of logic. The first one is presentation logic, which is basically anything you see. It's the GUI interface. GUI stands for graphical user interface. Then we have processing logic, which is going to do all the calculations and computations behind the scenes. Some of these things that we mentioned through the database portion of the class is procedures and functions. The third type of logic is storage logic, which focuses on storage and retrieval, which we have spent the majority of our class time on. So there are three types of client server networks that we can see. The first one is the fat client, which means that the client is going to handle most of the processing logic and the server is going to be mostly absent there and focused on the storage logic. There's the thin client where the server is going to handle all the processing logic. And then there's a distributed or hybrid approach where both the client and the server share in the processing logic. Here's an example of a Java program using a two-tier network. As you can see here, we have an Oracle driver that we are going to register. In this class, we focus more on MySQL, but this is another illustration of how this would work with a different environment. And then we're going to identify the type of driver. We are going to establish our database connection here. This IP address and port is the IP address of my server and the port you would connect by default to an Oracle server. Here we're going to create a statement and execute a query from that statement. So this query is now going to pull a list of all the students from the student table. And then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all the records one at a time. So the while loop means find the first record and then do this logic, then get the next record and do this logic until there are no more records. So what are we going to do? We are going to print out the name of the student from that particular record. And then we'll close the, our connection. We are not going to be programming in a job environment, but this gives you some kind of perspective of how this would work. We will focus more on end-tier networks and how this is done with PHP and MySQL. So, a brief introduction to end-tier networks is we still have the three types of logic. Instead of two hosts, we have multiple hosts. For example, the client could be focused on the presentation logic. We could have a web server that does some of the processing logic for showing web pages to the user. We have an application server that could also do processing logic. This would be like the PHP program. And then we have the storage logic that would interact with the database server directly. And then all this would be interconnected. In a multi-tier network, we have several components. The first is the client. Typically, what will happen is that users will connect as clients to our network via a browser. For example, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari, Edge, etc. Then the web server will primarily use Apache or IIS. These are the dominant ones of the market right now. And an application server will then be connected to, and this is rendered using PHP or other applications. We are focusing on PHP in this class. And then finally, we have a database server, and then top three are Oracle, MySQL, and SQL Server. So what's going to happen is traditionally when we connected to a web server, we had static page requests where there was no processing. Essentially, all we did is we connected to the web server and the web server would render the HTML and return it. And we have one of these really ugly looking web pages that we still sometimes see today. What we focus more on today is dynamic page requests, which is going to have server side processing. So for example, the client is going to request a PHP page. The web server is going to say, hey, I recognize there's some PHP code here. So I'm going to invoke the PHP from the application server. The application server may call the database, depending on if we tell it to call the database to return some data or something. And then the database would return the data. The application server would return the data to the web server. And then the web server would finally return the HTML to the client. So now we're going to give you a basic introduction to HTML, CSS, and PHP. So with HTML, a new employee form is going to be created. As you can see here, we have all the elements of a form that we need to be able to create a new employee. This would work just fine on its own. However, it doesn't look that very nice. So in order to make it look better, we're going to style it using CSS. This is exactly the same form, just the CSS, which is cascading style sheets, is going to make it look better depending on the settings that I put. 
PHP, on the other hand, when I click this Submit button, what it's going to do is it's going to take all the pieces of this form. It is either going to return results automatically or it's going to interact with the database and then come back to PHP and show the result. So in this case, if we submitted the form, it would go to the PHP application. PHP application would then insert the new employee, and then the database would return a result saying whether or not the employee was successfully inserted or not, and then we could display the message finally to the end user.